Hey, how's it going, folks? Mike here again with my movement. Again, um, so on our Mondays, um, we'll be going pretty continuously. Um, try to make it a regular schedule on Mondays uh, at 3 o'clock. So um, today, we're going to integrate some of the techniques that we did in our past. Um, if you haven't seen past videos, you can check out our previous library at mymovement.com and just get caught up to speed on what we were working on. So week one was more focused on standing techniques. So from standing position, that's the bipedal, right? I use my two legs to drive energy from the ground, right? Focus on jabs, crosses, and front kicks, okay? Front kicks, all those being thrust weapons, okay? So what do I mean by thrust? We're going forward from one place to another in a straight linear fashion. My thrusting, okay, ending with my fist, wow. and the bottom of my foot for my front kicks, otherwise known in Thai boxing, which is more so my familiar background, that front kick known as the T, T E D T. So it really is T H I T. But in any event, that was the first week. The second week, we focused a bit more on ground techniques. So on the ground, we tend to be on two, three, or four points of contact, okay? So, kids and feet, or at some points when we go from our technical stand-up, which is how if we were to be pushed on the ground or any weight wound up on the ground, we can get up effectively and safely, okay? So, our combat base, just to give us a little bit of the background here, okay? And again, you can use your yoga mats if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and go without because I've been endured for the contact with the ground, but it also keeps us a bit more intentional in how we actually move our energy around the ground, okay? So here, pretending that I fell to the ground, okay? By any way, I'm going down, trying to bring my butt as close to the ground as possible right here, bring my hip from falling in a more sideways fashion, down to meet the ground first. And then here, I can slap the ground. So whichever side I land on, slapping the ground that same side hand. What that does is it helps mitigate the impact protecting my head and my spine, okay? A lot of the um, that entire complex together, which we really need to keep safe, to keep ourselves conscious for anything that's coming our way. Okay, so again, we're in a combat mode here, right? So I want to make sure that safety is of the utmost importance and focus. Okay, so again, here if I fall back fully, down, drop now, sit in the chair here, chin to my chest, and here, just lowering my butt to the ground here, right? So being so intentional. So I don't even have to break fall as we call it, right? I slap the ground, again, to break the fall to mitigate impact to my ribs, internal organs, and my head, okay? So from here, we worked on what we call our combat base. So here, one foot behind one knee, and my knees pointing in a 45 degree fashion here, okay? And I rise up, no hands. Hips forward for a good stretch, and back down, and I switch my legs. One foot behind one knee, bring my straighter leg a little bit further ahead so that I have a good base to come forward on. Okay. Do it more facing you now. Okay. Let's just all go together here. Okay. Combat base. Keeping my hands in upright position, protecting my base, rolling over my bottom shin, back. Just sit on your butt. Switch legs. One foot behind one knee. And drop back and forth. Okay, Let's do this for another 30 seconds. Hips forward and back down. Try not to use your hands again. I'm mixing levels here. So until we get more established in what level we're doing for which particular session, I'm going to mix up the levels even within our brakes. So here, try not to use my hands, but if you need to, bring that same side hand to the ground where your knees are most bent, and at least you have one hand protecting the face. Okay, let's try three more. Just forward, and stretch, and back down. Find yourself rolling all the way back, that's fine. Use the momentum, swing the legs forward. Now, and time. Okay, so 
now, from here, I'm going to go into some striking just to open the hips up there. Okay. So, my jab cross. Jab cross. Okay, again, my jab with my feet at a staggered stance. Okay, so one foot steps back, 45 degrees in the other. Now, if you're a lefty, I will bring my left foot in the rear because that is where my power would be. Again, a guide more so than a rule. Some people are ambidextrous. Okay, now switch out of the way. Does everyone remember? Hands in the pot. Okay, so where my feet are facing, right? My feet are like their hands of a pot. So if I happen to be right handed, I slide that right foot back, pointing out a 45 degree angle. So it is two o'clock with my feet. Lefty, 10 o'clock. Friday, two o'clock. Until so your feet are hands on the clock. Okay, again, back to that jab and cross. My jab is in front, slightly ahead already. My right hand. Right? I throw my right hand without any twist of my right foot. It doesn't get the same reach. Right? You see my hands are on different levels. So I'm going to raise that heel and turn it. And turn and rotate my right hip so that I give my right arm more length. Okay. Now, for now, I want to go ahead and go into how we actually make a fist. So when we actually start making contact with things, okay, we know how to do so safely. So. My hands here, right? Okay, I'm gonna ball them up, bring my fingers together, and knuckle by knuckle. Down, 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 fold them into each other, right? To a nice tight and square fist here, okay? Now what I'm gonna do with my thumbs, my thumbs are gonna come to bring in and reinforce my first two knuckles here, as you see, okay? So that's where my thumbs belong. Just on the outside, we're not tucking our thumb inside right here. We're actually tucking the first two knuckles, which is the amount of reach that my thumb will have anyway, okay? My wrist is nice and straight, and my fist, nice, compact, and square, okay? So again, I'm rotating my wrist at a point again, okay? So now we're gonna go into a small shadow boxing session here, where I'm going left jab, okay? That's my lead, so it's my jab. My right cross, of course, again, if you're left-handed and your left foot is behind, your left would be your cross, and okay? Your right would be your jab, okay? As I'm right-handed, follow along in that fashion, okay? So here, jab, cross, right front kick, and back. Jab, cross again. Put the weight back onto your right foot, left front kick, okay? Let's just do that for a count of 30 seconds, okay? I'm gonna face you in the meantime. Ready, and go. Again, jab, cross, raise that heel off the ground, and then come forward, counter bounce with the right hand right alongside the right leg as you draw the right leg forward. Here we go. One across, my jab, left front kick, okay? Jab, cross, right, T, jab, Cross, put the weight back on that right foot, and left front kick. One, two, kick. One, two, kick. Notice, as I kick, I lean back. So as my strike comes forward, my shoulders lean back. Jab, cross, right, front kick. Jab, cross, left, front kick. Just so I'm keeping nice and steady. Three more. One, two, right. One, two, shift the weight onto the back foot, left. Counterbalancing with my corresponding hand, right kick, right hand counterbalances, left kick, left hand counterbalances. All right, let's go into some jumping jacks. Here we go, guys. As I switch, you will switch. We'll go from a series of high knees straight into jumping jacks. Ready, ready, ready. In five, four. Three, two, and here we go. High knees. Okay, making sure we're moving at the shoulders, not so much the elbow. Nice and regular jumping jacks. Okay, keep as wide on your feet as possible. Nice, and let's go ahead and switch back to those high knees. Okay, we're mixed levels here, right? 
So speed is up to you. Just try to get those guys parallel to the ground. And a different set of jumping jacks. So go forward this time. To the monkey. Nice. And switch again. High knees. Really try to get those knees up. Nice, nice, nice. And let's go crisscross now. Cross the hands, cross the feet. Do the clap. Let's get a sense of timing and rhythm. And switch high knees again. Get those shoulders moving. Nice. And let's go side to side now. Jumping jacks. Nice. Back those high knees. Last set. Nice. And it's time for the five. Feet together, feet apart. And time. Okay, let's make sure we always have water on hand. Here we'll start with a full minute rest. As we go along, we'll progressively move to less time during our water breaks if we can. Thirty seconds. Okay, and time. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now let's go ahead and touch on again. If, uh, if you've seen last week's video or not, we were doing a drill that we call kick groups. Okay, so it's a drill that helps us learn how to stand up safely. Okay, so we have to train the muscles in which we're using. Obviously, right? It's like we learned how to walk, right? Step by step, we took a few falls. Okay, that's what a break ball represents. Okay, but eventually, you want to train those muscles to keep you stable and raise yourself up in a safe position as quickly as possible. Okay, so my kick boots, when I'm down on all fours, okay, hands slightly, well, actually, about hips width. Okay, our shoulders look better. Okay, you can go slightly wider. That's a little bit too much for you. Okay, what I'm doing basically is keeping me, you know, my arms in a stable position, I'm not totally locked out and straight, a bit engaged in my triceps. What I'm doing is raising my feet off the ground and landing on one and kicking through to the opposite side with the other. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the ground, land on my left, and kick in between my left hand and left foot. As I rotate, notice the pivot, rotating on the ball of my foot. As I do so, I get heavier in my right arm, lighter in my left. So I may as well bring that hand to my head to protect myself. And then I'll go ahead and extend my right foot straight across. And what does this represent? Okay, for those that were here last week, or even the week before, that is my technical standup, or standing base, okay? We have our combat base, just rise up with the alveate in my hands. Okay, it's more just for practice, right? Good core control. Okay, but a safer way to get up is my standing hips. Okay, one foot behind my knee, same way. I go elbow and knee, and raise up. So I'm on my two point base here. Left foot, right hand. Left hand is protecting my base, and I extend my right foot. Now, before I bring that right foot back into picture and back down to the ground, I'm going to rotate my hips down towards the ground. And as I retract my right, I extend my left. So I can stand up safely. Okay, notice that. Protecting my head and extending to keep them at bay. Kick. 
bend. And I stand safely, my eyes at least, still on my opponent. Okay? So, again, putting that into the drill. Right? Our kick throughs. I raise up, land on one, kick through the other. It's up to you how high you jump. Right? We need really a small little hop right there to make sure you land safely. Okay? So we're going to do that for a full minute straight. Okay? And again, if this turns out to be too easy for you, then we'll try to keep more stability, making sure that we're using our arms as safely as possible for a good base and landing on the foot and then kicking through a little slower and a little more silently. Okay? Again, you can do this on a yoga mat. I prefer to do it on the ground as I have to be intentional in how I land. Okay? All right, here we go. Get a few practice in while we have the chance. We'll start in 10. Quiet feet, quiet hands. Ready? And go. No, so one point, I'm just one foot on the ground at a time. We're not going for speed. We're going for control. That foot, again, faces out. Toes pointing one way, heels pointing the other. Okay? Keep going. Just halfway through. Nice, make sure we're staying really good and balanced. Rotate the straight arms, make sure all four corners of the hands are met to the mat or ground. Kick through, protect the head. Kick through, protect the head. Up high, land soft. And time. Time will be in this seated squat. Nice, really low squat. Prayer squat. Palms together. Stretch the wrists. Stretch the groin. Elbows in between the thighs. Again, we're going to make sure. Drop that butt really low. And keeping my spine nice and tall. Head up. Back straight. And where are we breathing? Yes, obviously in our lungs. But which part of our lungs? Be mindful. Ever getting all of the lungs, right? Breath being a hot topic, as we know, especially as a plate, but it always has been. You just aren't very conscious of it a lot of times, right? So, make sure I'm breathing. It's my lower lungs, my back ribs, right? Front ribs, right? Really going low, but trying to breathe into my belly, in and out, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Try to stay in that position for a few more seconds. Really breathe into the back lungs, back ribs. Excellent. Now, I roll the squat. I'm going to rise up just slightly. Keep the elbows on the inner thigh. Let's go up into our sumo squat here. Walk the feet a bit wider. So we get a bit more engaged, stretching, the adductors, groin, go side to side here. All right. Heel toeing, heel toeing out. So my feet are now wider. Let's go down to the right. Stretch the left leg. Toes up, foot flex. Try to keep your posture upright as you can. Toes are up, heels down. These point straight up as well. Keep the thigh engaged. And let's switch. No hands if you can. Switch effectively to the opposite side. Nice. Keeping that foot flexed. Good engagement in the hamstring here. Still keeping the thigh engaged. Let's switch. Toe is still pointed up. Just make sure you can see me here. I'm only on a smaller screen, so it's hard for me to see my digits. Right? 
you're able to go from toes up to toes down. Toes facing straight ahead of me, knee facing straight ahead of me. And open up, grind, keeping that posture as upright as possible, not trying to lean out. Right? Let's feel that outer hip loosening up. And switch again. Nice. So it's up, two down, and upright posture if you can. Okay, let's go for a lunge. To my right side, okay. Rotate to where both my toes are facing straight ahead of me. I lean my left heel is off the ground. My hips are nice and neutral. Back and straight, head slightly tilted up. Let's bring the hips down towards the ground rather than the knee, okay. Okay, let's twist to the right. Raise that right arm off the ground, pointing straight up towards the sky, looking straight up. One more breath, twist in those hips. And switch. Here, I'm gonna walk my hands to the opposite side, rotate the feet, pivot, pivot, pivot. My feet should be in the place that they need to be. And I go the opposite way. Again, making sure my feet have lateral space between them. Right, at least hips width apart. Both hands down, head up, and hips facing down towards the ground. And let's twist to the left, pointing straight up. Let that twist happen during that exhalation. One more breath. Okay, almost there. Spacing back in again. Okay, now let's try and sink down to that split knot. Here I have the convenience, quote unquote, of having a bare floor right here, right? But what it can do is make you go a little too far into your split, right? Just make sure you're engaging your legs. So you're not going too far to an uncomfortable position. My hands slightly ahead of my shoulders, shake my chest, and we dive through. Wave-like fashion in my upper body. Keeping my legs straight as I can. Shake my chest, my head rises. Once I hit my lowest point, push back, chin the chest. And dive through. Try to keep those elbows hugging the side as you go through for two more. Hips down, push back. And tie, heel toe, heel toe towards each other. Let's go for that nice long hang again before we rise all the way up. Keep the head and arms nice and heavy. Keep those legs straight, feet hips width apart. Two fists in between the feet. It's a good distance. Chin to chest. I rise up again, starting at the very base of my spine. I'm tucking in my gut. Everything going from the bottom to the top. As a good, true foundation does. All right, so this arms out. Side and up. You have the option of pointing thumb over thumb or fingers interlaced, pushing, rotating those palms up toward the sky, or go back or full back bend, opening up those hips even more. Excellent. Okay, and time out. This time, 40 seconds. Okay, back in at 10. Okay, back into striking. Okay, welcome back. Now, again, my jab and my cross. This time we're gonna go into that knee like we did last week. Knee is not too different than my front kick that I threw earlier, right? Where's my leg drives forward in a thrusting fashion, okay? And my top body leans back, okay? And that's not extending my leg fully, right? So the blood force would be through my knee, okay? So, jab, cross, right knee. 
to one. Two, again, raising that right heel on the ground, make sure my hips are on the same square level, okay? And then here, I go for my knee. Again, so how we showed last week, I'm grabbing someone by the head or the back of the neck, my palms turn outward, fingers together, pulling them down towards that knee. Still not lapsing, back that key. One hand home for protection as the other one goes out for attack, okay? Good common rule to have, okay? Left goes out, right stays behind. Right goes out, left comes back, okay? Now from here, you can either step to add momentum to the knee or just raise that left heel on the ground, pull more thrust, and bring that knee back to the ground, okay? All right, so here we go. Jab cross, right knee. One, two, right knee. Okay, nice. Yeah, jab cross, right knee. One, two. I know some people think, like, I can see you right there. Like, oh, can you see me? No, I can't see you. Yeah. I just got a message. Hey, jab cross, right knee. Make sure you throw that knee. This time we're totally pointing that foot as opposed to our half point or flex foot when we throw. Our front kick, okay? That looks nice ballerina point. Bang, all right? Let's go. Two more minutes. And I'll be adding as we go along. Right knee. Those that throw that right knee, shoulders come back, which allows my hips to come more forward, thus keeping balance. Jab, cross, knee. See that left hand stays up. Jab, cross, right knee. Jab, cross, right knee. Right. And I can internally rotate. My leg, to have my knee come more forward, or just keep my foot beneath my knee and thrust forward. Jab, cross, right knee. Hey, nice. Now, we're gonna add on, right? Still going right along. This time, I'm gonna switch it to our left knee and then come back into our stance. Jab, cross, right knee, left knee. Boom. And then back into my stance. Lateral view. Jab, cross, right knee. Up back, switch. Left knee, step back, step back. Okay, so notice those two shallow steps back, so I come back into that two o'clock stance if you're righty, or 10 o'clock stance if you're lefty. Okay, I'll go lefty for a little while. Okay, jab, cross, knee, switch, knee. Step back into your stance as quickly as you can, okay? Don't try to rush back to your stance step by step. Okay, jab, cross, one, two, knee. Switch knee. Back into your stance. Jab cross. One, two. Knee. Switch. Knee. Back into my stance. 30 seconds. Knee. Knee. Back into your stance. Jab cross. Knee. Knee. Back in. Knee, knee, one more. Uh, uh, knee, knee. Nice. Okay, now burpees. 10. Okay, those that don't know a burpee, follow me along. If you do, let's get cracking. Here we go. Hands down, feet back, push up, and a jump. That's just one. Nine more. Soft landing, coach. Soft landing. Nice. Keep going. Kick both feet back. Push up. Bring both feet back. Same time. Squat. And jump. Three more. Down. Kick back. Feet back up. Squat. Jump. And time. Okay. Let's go for water break. 20 seconds this time. Here we go. All right, back in, back in. Okay, so as promised, right, we're going to continue to integrate. Okay, so I think everyone understands at this point, or begin to understand that all of our movement comes pretty much, this foundation comes from the ground. Okay, I'm in a standing position. Okay, standing can be relative, right? From a quadruped, right? This is standing. Okay, from bipedal, okay, which we are, 
most of us, okay, are on two feet on the ground. Either way, even as I'm walking, my energy is poured in from the nice solid base that is on the ground. Okay, so from here, we're gonna get into a bit more rotation this time. Okay, so you're gonna come into a bridge and kick through this time. All right, so from my seated position, you can use your yoga mat for this. Right, just make sure you have a good amount of space. I would say about uh, 10 feet by 10 feet, be about the bare minimum you need. Right? Just to make sure we're not, you know, kicking down any uh, family heirlooms or anything. Okay, All right, so here I'm going down on my back. And what do we do? We can bring those legs up and swing and forward for momentum. One foot behind one knee into my combat base. Okay, or here in my standing base where I have a hand on the ground. Into my head. Let's go ahead and kick that foot forward. Okay. Now, after I kick forward, right, I'm going to place the edge of my foot on the ground. Okay. So bring that foot into the picture. Right. Here, I'm going to raise up my hips up for a nice bridge. Okay. Now, with that bridge, I'm going to raise my leg up and over. Okay. I'm now using my right foot as a base, my straight leg. So I'm going to rotate from the edge of the foot to the ball of my foot. And rotate up and on the ground, pivoting and kick through the opposite side. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so let's begin the concept. Down on my back, I raise up through my standing base, elbow, knee, hand down to the ground. I'm checking my head and my left. Again, I don't want my leg out too far to stand on. Closer I am, the higher up I can bridge and the further away I am from my opponent who's in front of me. Okay. Bring that foot from behind the knee, extend forward. Okay. I'm going to place that foot on the ground. I'm going to raise up, rotating on the ball of my foot, and down to so the point where my hands are shoulders width apart. I'm still pivoting, 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 pivoting on the ball of my foot. My right hand comes off the ground. My left foot extends back. Okay. Again. Down. Knee, elbow, head. Raise up. Kick forward. Lower that foot down. Raise up for bridge. Extending the hips. Rotate on that straight leg. And to the ground. Again, the slower, with more control, the better. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Right hand raises, left foot extends the kick 90 degrees away from my original point. Okay, so what we're gonna do is try and do that in continuity. Right, so my combat base, which we're a little familiar with now, bring up, bringing my hands on the same level, pivot, 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 even if you need a slight hop to pivot, kick through, and place the foot on the ground. Guess what? You go the opposite way. Raise those hips up. On my two point base. Rotate, extend the leg while you retract the hands. Hips up. And kicking through. Hips up. And then the up. And straighten the leg. Through. I have a nice sweeping motion of the outer foot along the ground. Okay, so those that have been participating in continuity, we're going to go ahead and do that all together. Okay, two minutes straight. Okay, so again, it's not so important where I land. Again, I want to have a, a pretty good amount of space on each angle to make sure that I have enough space to rotate my hips and kick through. Okay, so starting the clock in 10. Go ahead, feel free to grab a quick drink of water. So I know even though these moves are fairly static, or even because they're fairly static, they may consume more energy. All right, 10 seconds. Now we don't have to kick straight up. You can kick, just keep the leg as straight as we can, okay? So I extend my leg on that base, okay? Just so we get the functionality behind the move, okay? I lower that leg down. Up and kick through 
And again. Control. Right. Hips up. Extend. See how the outer edge of my foot meets the ground. Then extend. Pushing forward. Try to kick straight out of the angle. And kick back. Or more to the side. Tends to be a bit of a 45 degree angle. All right, one more minute. Raise those hips up. Make sure the shoulder's just above the wrist here. Good stability. Raise up. And touch it gently. And time is moving, but it's not a race. Hips up. Control. Really sweep that arm up and over. Then follow by the leg up and over. Hips up. Yeah, up and over. Which also signifies our bridge movement that we did past two weeks as well. Hips up. Bridging up. Opening up. More elevation. Hand comes down, same level as the other. Three more. Straight leg becomes my bent leg. Bent leg becomes my straight leg. And time. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to go into a bit more of a stretch here. Okay, so let's come back into that deep squat. Really make sure you get those shoulders in between the legs. And just breathe in that position. Palms can be together, even not. Just want the butt nice and low. Open up the sacrum. Right, lower spine. Again, as you form to your spine, good and upright, and slightly tip it up. Again, breathe into those back lungs. more good breaths. Good upright posture. Drop the head, drop the arms, smooth toe together. Let the head, arms hang nice and heavy, straighten the legs. Begin to rotate, starting from the base of the spine. Let everything else hang heavy. Chain to the chest, arms still heavy. A little more so towards your front foot. Nice and heavy. Tuck in the gut. Elongate the spine. One vertebrae at a time. Now let's just sweep the arms straight back. Hips forward. Good back bend. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is get a bit more into rotation now. Okay. This isn't a technical timeout just yet. Okay. So, what we're doing, right, is I want to introduce the round kick. Okay. We touched on it last week. So, we just kind of re familiarize ourselves. Now, again, thrust weapons, punches, right? They're coming forward. Making a point straight on, right? That point may be smaller or bigger, depending on size of this or our foot. Okay, making sure that I'm indeed when I kick with my front kick, my foot is either flexed or at very least my toes are flexed up towards my knee. And I don't want a full straight foot when I kick forward. Okay, I'm injuring my toes there. Okay, so from here, 
we're going to go for the round tick. Now, round tick comes from, as you guess it, a rounded trajectory. So my leg begins to straighten as it courses along the room in lateral fashion. Okay, so I'm still a few. What it takes here is to make sure that I'm rotating on the ball of my foot on my opposite leg each kick. So what I'll do is try to go into a full 180 turn for each one, okay? 180 turn. Or if you're a bit more advanced, right, you have more balance, maybe you had a dancing background of some sort. You understand me very well. Okay, I'm going to turn all the way around, okay? So again, it really depends on how conditioned all of your foot is right here, right? So you come on the heel of your foot towards the end, but just trying to get the intention behind it, I want to stand all my foot, my big rotation, okay? So jab, cross, round kick. Okay, just going to do a few more just to kind of open the hips up a little more before you course, okay? And then, of course, moving forward into more techniques for later classes, possibly different level classes as we move forward. All right, so jab, cross again. Jab, cross. This is my step with my left, right? And I can step in an outward angle to get more trajectory for my kick. Nice. Notice that counterbalance still is in play. Swing my corresponding arm down my corresponding leg in a scissor like fashion. Jab, cross, step, kick. Hope that full pivot. Okay. Jab, cross, we can sweat, switch kick. Switch your stance, step, push off the ground, and come back to your stance. Okay, let's go. Jab, cross. One, two. All right, round kick. Coming back to your stance. Jab, cross, switch, step, push. Put the kicking leg in the memory. Point that foot. So, what are we kicking with? Oh, shit. Back into my stance. One, two, back into your stance. One, two, kick. One, two, quick switch. Left slightly back, right step forward. And go for that full rotation. And we're trying to leap around as silently as with attention as possible, right? I'm all engaged on all four, five of my toes. Right? So I have good relation with the ground. Right? Keeping support from and pivoting on. And also keep your neighbors happy as well, right? If you have another in close quarters at all. Okay, and time. Okay, so let's grab a quick sip of water. This time back in 10 seconds. Okay, and time. All right, so we're going to end with um, just a uh, good arm balance here, okay? Uh, those that are yogis at all, right? Have, you know, relative uh, working amount of yoga in my practice um, through my Buddha Khan flow class. But here, I want you to come into a really wide base with the hands here. We're going to come into what we call our crow position, okay? So... Nice and wide base here. Make sure I'm all in the picture. Fingers facing straight ahead forward. And my fingers are evenly split apart. Okay, not too far apart. Just evenly enough so I'm in all my knuckles are met to the ground, all four corners. My hands are met to the ground as much as possible. Even straightening out that thumb. Okay. Now, pretty much coming from my deep squat and raising my heels off the ground. My feet are still pointed out 45 degrees. I'm going to create a slight bend in my arms so that I can rest my inner thigh on my triceps. And here, what I'm essentially doing, I can actively get a good stretch in my groin. But here, for those that are a bit more advanced, maybe know the position, I'm trying to balance on just my arms alone. So here, I'm gonna tuck my heels towards my butt and have just my hands as a base. Okay, I'll go more of a lateral view here. Go from that deep squat. Hands wider than the hips width apart, wider than shoulders width apart. 
even this for the part. So here, start with a nice wide base to have good balance. Really drawing the heel towards the butt. And the more I bend my arms, the more engaged I am in my groin, okay, in my core. Okay, let's go ahead and go for that, those who haven't done it just yet. Okay, let's go for 30 seconds. Now, when I say 30 seconds, it doesn't mean you have to stay in that position for 30 seconds. It means within the amount of time, do what you can, okay? Always listen to your body, All right? So, here you are, go in front again. Hands nice and wide. All four corners of the hands met to the mat. Raise off, heel off the ground, toes off the ground if you can. Bring those feet back to the ground and feel you lose any balance. And those can, right? We can bring a yoga mat or a cushion right in front. To place our head on just in case we do actually fall forward, okay? But here, if we feel we lose a little bit of balance, put our weight back into our legs and come out, okay? 20 seconds. Nice. You know, let those arms bend a bit more. Really opening up those hips. Good, strong core, but not too rigid to where I can't allow my, uh, my lungs to fill with oxygen. Nice. And let's slowly rotate back. Nice. And back into that deep squat. Very nice. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to rise up into our sumo squat again. Elbows in between the thighs to the point where my thighs are parallel to the mat. Again, good stretch in the groin, side to side. Nice. Okay. And flex the foot towards the knee. And then switch. Toes up, foot flex. And switch. Toes up, foot flex this time. Rotating the hips inward, knees and toes facing straight ahead. Me posture's nice and upright. And switch. Inner foot to the ground, posture upright. Again, stretching the adductors to the groin. And switch. Lunge again. Head up, hips down, neutral. Back leg is straight, hips down towards the ground, head up. Nice. Let's go ahead and drop that right elbow. Inner elbow down towards the mat. Nice, and let's twist. And we switch. Pivot, pivot, pivot to the opposite side. Head up, hips down. Back leg nice and straight as possible. Left elbow down towards the mat. But drop that shoulder past the height of your thigh. And twist, opposite direction. Pointing straight up, looking up to where you're pointing. Very nice. Okay, facing the front. Here we're gonna dive through for five. Okay, get the legs nice and straight. Allow my feet don't go out too far past your comfort zone. Right into a split or as close as we can get to it. Walk the hands slightly ahead of the shoulders and dive through. Notice my arms, nice and parallel to one another. Elbows are nice and tight. Diving through five times. Now to that split. Dive out once it's too much stress. Head rises up, hips down. Push back for the last one. Nice, okay. Now work yourself up onto your feet as best you can. Push up, heel toe, heel toe. Walk the hands back towards the feet. Excellent. And let's rise up. And open up the spine. Very nice. Okay, now let's get to our outer hip stretch here. I'm gonna bring my left foot over top of my right thigh. Now keep in mind, my thigh, not my knee, okay? I'm gonna keep my foot flexed. So both feet should be in a flex position. Obviously, the foot on the ground is flex. What I'm doing here is I'm just 
If you have them in my leg, out and underneath. Let's get a good IT band stretch that out of thigh, glute stretch, forward back stretch. Try to keep my back as upright as possible. And straight, head slightly tilted up. My shin is parallel to the ground. Nice. And from here, I'm not going to put that foot to the ground just yet. My shin goes from parallel to perpendicular to the ground. So draw my knee into my chest in upright fashion. Put me flexed, four pointed. I'm just going to draw my knee in close to my chest. Excellent. Now from here, I'm going to slide my hand to my foot, which is now pointed. I'm going to kick back. Uh, I reach my opposite hand forward. Palm faces up. My heel extends away from my body. I want to keep my gaze. I know my eyes are on you, but I'm going to keep my gaze through to my fingers where my fingers are pointing. Palms facing up. Keep the heel away from the butt. Extend. Good base. You can have a slight bend on your base leg if you need. And let's draw everything back together. And lower that foot to the ground. Okay, opposite side. Keep my foot in a nice flex position so as not to cause any undue stress on my outer knee. Let's just go ahead and lower it down. Okay, outer hip. Lower back. Gather underneath my foot, make my knee. Just pulling my chest down towards my shin. Keep my back as straight as possible. Nice and engaged. Head slightly tilted up. You need to come out. That's fine. Come out. Get the opportunity to come back in again. One more breath. Good upright posture. Now, without bringing that foot to the ground, go ahead and draw my knee into my chest. Let's get upright posture. Try to not use just the aid of your hand, right? Try to really draw that knee into the chest. Hand and chest auxiliary. Nice. I'm going to slide my hand down to my foot, which is now in the pointed position. I'm turning so you can see me. I'm going to extend left hand forward, right foot back. Kicking you with the butt. And reaching forward. And if there's a slight bend, my flight leg is going to balance. I extend further out, straighten the leg more. Again, my gaze is through to where my fingers are pointing. Open those hips, keep the heel away from the butt, and draw everything in together, slowly lowering that foot down to the ground. With intention. Okay, let's go ahead and in. Cesar. Cesar, folks. Remember Cesar position? Okay, I'll put my yoga mat down. Again, just a uh, forethought. Right? The reason why I don't use the mat again. Try to be as minimal as possible. So let us be able to do this anytime, anywhere, right? Either outdoors or indoors, right? Depending on your comfort level. But as minimal things that I have, right? Then I'm inuring myself for any conditions going forward. Okay, so yeah, for some of us, yeah, that means putting a yoga mat now. Maybe that's maybe that's too little for some people, right? You might even need a pillow, or maybe soft mats like in my actual gym. But here. Go on stays our position and really point those toes to get a good stretch on top of the feet. So interlace the palms together. Right to this fingers, we're going to go palm in hand. Let's just go ahead, close our eyes, stick into that stays our position. My posture be nice and complex. My head. Slightly to the forward. Maybe you can be 
present with our breathing. so automatic in our lives, so unconscious, yet we are conscious of it, learn to make it be more intentional in our every movements, every aspect of our lives, and through the nose, really reaching a deep portion of the lungs, slight pause and release. Again, I'm being present with my breath. That's anything that things into our lives, into our sensory perception. Noise, rain outside, neighbors next door, even thoughts, especially thoughts, conditions, situations. We'll enter our presence, our consciousness. Acknowledge it for what it is. It's allowed to go. Just let it go. That's all we have is this moment. The future isn't certain. The past is no longer here. Here's this moment. And then deepen your breath. Slow draws in and out. There's something in the thoughts. As long as you go, just let it go. Back to the breath. It's always the best thing to do. As long as we are conscious. It's all spine. Sensations, discomforts. I just love to experience it. You can mod modify your position. Feel free to do so. One more breath. Your eyes, taking the room around you, space. And acknowledging the moment for what it is. And this moment. And this moment. Thank you all again for joining me for Launch of Motion. See you again next Monday. We'll be announcing any classes going forward. And so then, so you always be mindful of your body. Mind and spirit.